Hello. So in this video, we're going to take a look at different ways of amplitude stabilization for the Winebridge oscillator. Um, as we mentioned, the Winebridge oscillator consists of uh, an amplifier, non-inverting amplifier with a gain of three, and a lead lag network. Um, and I, so I have drawn here the standard Winebridge oscillator, and we said the Barhausen criterion is met as long as the gain of the non-inverting amplifier is equal to three. And so, fairly easy, I've designed a non-inverting amplifier with resistors R1 and 2R1. Since my closed loop gain is equal to uh, 1 plus 2R1 over R1 in this case, I have a gain equal to 3. Now, we've mentioned that uh, because of temperatures, uh, instabilities in the circuit and sources of noise and whatnot, uh, it's very difficult that the gain will, uh, will be exactly 3, but that it will stay at 3 as time goes on. And so what we're going to end up with if we just design regular wine bridge oscillator without any sorts of, uh, of amplitude stabilization is that uh, we will not get the, the sustained sinusoidal oscillation that we're looking for. It's either to, going to die out, uh, most likely, or uh, depending on the circumstances, it may just be increasing until the amplifier saturates. Uh, and so we need to provide some sort of amplitude stabilization method. We're going to take a look at two common methods. Uh, the first one is what I've labeled as the HP method, even though I'm not certain that that's a very standard term, but it was basically a method designed um, at Hewlett Packard. And it consists of starting with a circuit that has a gain slightly greater than three. And so we imagine that uh, the oscillation is going to start increasing and then having some sort of feedback, negative feedback mechanism, so that once that gain uh, reaches three, if it tries to increase past that, uh, then that negative feedback mechanism will try to decrease the gain. And if it tries to go, the gain starts going below three, the negative feedback will try to cause the gain to increase so that the gain will essentially be stable at three. The way that is achieved is replacing R1 with a tungsten lamp. And so I'm going to just replace it on that original circuit up there. Um, And so this is basically my R1 now. Uh, and the idea behind it, the way it provides that negative feedback, is that as my gain to the of the circuit increases or decreases, um, the resistance in the tungsten lamp will increase or decrease in order to counteract that effect um, in, in the amplitude of the oscillation. So let's imagine that our oscillation, since we have a gain initially greater than 3, is going to uh, the amplitude is going to start increasing. So as the oscillation amplitude increases, uh, the amount of power dissipation also increases, which causes the temperature in the lamp to increase. As the temperature in the lamp increases, uh, the resistance value of the lamp, I'm going to call it our lamp, also goes up. And if my uh, resistance of the lamp goes up, and my feedback resistor remains the same, uh, my overall gain is going to decrease, so my closed loop gain is going to decrease, and so that's how the negative feedback mechanism uh, will work. So in that case, we will have both a positive feedback uh, at the bottom of the circuit, uh, caused by the lead lag network, and negative feedback at the top of the circuit, uh, caused by that combination of a feedback resistor and the tungsten lamp or, or variable resistor. It, the idea is that it will be a temperature dependent resistor. So that will be uh, one common method for temperature stabilization. Another method that we can use for amplitude stabilization is what's known as a diode clamp. And so I have drawn the circuit down at the bottom. And notice that it is the same as the original circuit, except I have now replaced uh, the feedback resistor R2, or what I had originally labeled 2 times R1, I replace it by a combination of um, a resistor R3 in parallel with a resistor R4, uh, which is itself in series with uh, two parallel diodes, which are facing opposite directions. And so the, that overall, uh, we're going to see how it works as a variable uh, feedback resistor, a variable R2, if you will. Uh, just like before, we're going to start with a, uh, a gain for the circuit, which is slightly greater than 3. Uh, I didn't write that there, but um, maybe we should say we need for this to be, you know, 
slightly greater than 3. Perhaps uh, 3.1, 3.2, that's something that's going to cause the oscillations to start increasing. Uh, same thing with this second circuit. We will start with a gain that is slightly greater than 3. And the idea is that while the oscillations are small, uh, the diodes are going to be um, open. None of them is going to be forward biased. And so my overall, my effective value for the feedback resistor is equal to R3. So let's imagine if I had uh, you know, 10 kilo ohms and uh, 21 kilo ohms, for example. I'm going to write those in blue so that. So my R1 could be 10 kilo ohms, my R3 could be 21 kilo ohms, something slightly greater than 20 so that I have a, an effective gain greater than 3. Uh, and so initially, as we said, oscillations are small, uh, diodes are off, and therefore uh, my R2 effective is equal to R3, uh, which means that my gain, ACL, is going to be equal to 1 plus R3 divided by R1. Again, which is slightly greater than 3. And so my oscillations are going to start increasing. Uh, and so as the oscillations increase, uh, my diodes are going to kick in, are going to turn on my clamping diodes, <clears throat> so that one of them is going to be on during the positive half of the oscillation, the other one is going to be on during the negative half of the oscillation, but there's always going to be one diode uh, that is conducting, so one path for the current to go. Uh, which means that essentially it's going to appear as if um, the feedback resistor is R4 in parallel with R3. There is an so oscillations increase, um, diodes turn on, and R2 becomes equal to R3 in parallel with R4, and therefore my new gain is going to be equal to 1 plus um, R3 in parallel with R4 divided by R1. And the idea is uh, R4 sh should be sufficiently large so that the parallel combination is going to give me approximately equal to 2. So we could make it um, one order of magnitude larger than R3, something like 200 kilo ohms. And the idea is that eventually the circuit is going to stabilize uh, at, uh, at when the oscillations have reached their steady state. And so it's going to stabilize with a gain of approximately 3. Uh, and that's the method for the diode clamp stabilization. Um, notice that, again, in both methods we start with a circuit with a gain slightly greater than 3, so that we get that oscillation uh, started and uh, we use some sort of negative feedback mechanism so that as soon as that uh, gain tries to exceed a value of 3, uh, the feedback mechanism kicks in and it keeps the gain stable at a value of 3. And again, it is important uh, when one is designing one-bridge oscillators, it is important to have some sort of gain stabilization in place for the circuit to operate.